all right. Morning, Mr. Mason. Good morning. Hello, Johnny. Lovely morning. Hi, Johnny. Beautiful morning. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Harry, it's a marvelous morning. Have a nice trip. Sensation. Great city, Boston. Terrific. Nobody can, but I happen to have a photograph of her. Oh, oh. Well, well, well. Hello, Carter. So you combine business with pleasure. Wait till Judge Doolittle hears about this, my boy. Here's about what? About you getting married on his time, without his consent, or his daughter's. What's she got to do with it? Well, now, my boy, the chief topic of conversation around these parts has been that you and Miss Doolittle... No, malarkey. Office talk. Carter isn't a word of truth in it. Judge Doolittle may not think so. Is that so? Well, if he doesn't like it, he can lump it. Mason? Oh, good morning, Judge Doolittle. What's all this mess? Uh... Well, it seems that everybody around here found out that I, that uh, when I was up in Boston... What are you doing in Boston? You sent me, sir. Don't you remember? You sent me up there to get a deposition on the Higgins versus Higgins case. To get it? Yes, sir. Well, what's all this? What's all this horseplay? Well, while I was in Boston, after I got the deposition, I had a few hours to spare. And so I um, had a few, just a few hours. Well, well, go on, go on. I got married. You what? I got married. You got married? Yes, sir. I got married. Come into my office. Yes, sir. Where's the deposition? There you are, sir. What's this? Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, just sort of a letter. <laughs> so you got married? Yes, sir. I imagine this will be a surprise to some people. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. I mean, well, I don't know. It all happened rather suddenly. See, we met on Boston Common the night I arrived, and uh, I'd had a bite at Thompson's Spa, and then I took a little stroll around the common, and I saw her standing there. She, uh, just standing there, she had a cinder in her eye. Well? In her eye. Whose eye? Jane's. Uh, Mrs. Mason, my wife. Oh. Of course, she wasn't my wife then. She's my wife now, though. So. And I, I got the cinder out of her eye. And you married her? Yes, sir. Quick work, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, Judge, we we knew the moment we looked at each other. We, we knew the moment we looked at each other. You did? Yes, sir. Last year, there were nearly a half a million divorces in this country. Congratulations, Mason. Well, thank you very much, sir. Mr. Hunt would like your opinion on this, sir. Oh, this is for you, Mr. Mason. Special messenger. It's Mark Rush, important. Uh, Rush? Important? What is it? Oh, it's nothing. What is it? Oh, it's uh, a letter from my wife. Your wife? What'd you do, leave her in Boston? Oh, no, she's right here, sir. Here in town? Yes, sir. Well, if the wife's in town, why'd she write you a letter? Well, she likes to write letters, Judge. Yes, it's sort of a little custom we have. 
You see, she wrote me a letter the first day she met me, right as soon as she got home. And she's written me one ever since. Even coming down on the train together, she wrote me. You see, when I get a letter from her, it's sort of like a uh, sort of a visit, you see. Mm. Judge, uh, we, uh, when two people get married, they usually go on a honeymoon. I didn't. I don't approve of honeymoons. Waste of time. Uh-huh. Well, you know how women are, and Mrs. Mason and I... What about Higgins against Higgins? You're the only one in the office who knows this case. It's on the calendar for next week. Well, if I could get a continuance. Opposing counsel wouldn't consent. Well, but I talked to Mr. Hornblow this morning, and he agreed to a continuance. Well, all right. Take a week. A week. Well, Judge, I'm afraid we wouldn't be able to make it in a week. What? We couldn't make it in a week. Make what? My wife and I had sort of planned a trip to Europe on the Normandy. Oh, well, take two weeks then. Uh, after I got the sender out of Jane's eye, we we talked for a little while, and then we uh, took a little walk around the commons. Yes. And uh, now we walked for quite some time. Then we went over to Thompson Spa for a bite. Yes. And we had a bite. Well. Rather an unconventional meeting, wasn't it? These cookies are delicious. They're made with sour cream. Oh, I'm crazy about sour cream. I'm crazy about Jane. John's so young and impulsive. Oh, well, now, Mother, wait a minute. This is different. Are you visiting relatives here in New York, my dear? Uh... Well, yes and no, we, not exactly. <laughs> I came over with Johnny from Boston together last night. Well, yes, Mother, we thought as long as we were engaged. Engaged? Oh, I know how upset you must be, Mrs. Mason. You know so little about me, and it all happened so suddenly. Well, I should think it was sudden. What did your family have to say about it? I have no family. Oh. Didn't John say something about your taking a course in journalism? Yes, but I gave it up after I met Johnny. Uh, I'm sort of a postgraduate course. <laughs> oh, my dear, if you have a talent for writing, take my advice and develop it while you're young. One needs all one's time and energy for a career. Don't you think marriage is a career in itself? Oh, indeed, emphatically. That's why one mustn't rush into it pell-mell. Marriage is a business, a very serious business, a partnership, in the strictest sense of the word. One must prepare for it. There are so many things to learn. Well, uh, Jane will learn all those after we're married. I hope and pray that that day will not come for many years. Well, Mother, what, what do you mean? You mean we shouldn't? Emphatically not. There's no reason for Jane to develop into a little household drudge. Oh, I hope you understand. I have nothing against Jane. In fact, I like her. I like her very much. Well, I'm glad you do, Mother, because... You remember a little while ago you asked Jane whether she'd come to New York to visit relatives? Well, as a matter of fact, she has come to New York to visit relatives. She's visiting some right now. You see, we're married. Oh. Oh. Well, now, Mother, everybody gets married sooner or later. Johnny, get the smelling salts. What do they look like? Mother, where are the smelling salts? Uh. Uh. Well, 
Stan, is Dan. You have children of your own, I suppose, and you love them and devote your life to them. Then they'll grow up and leave you, and you'll say to yourself, it's all right, that's the way it is. You've served your purpose. Oh, Mother, don't excite yourself anymore. Oh, I'm all right now. <laughs> I wish you every possible happiness and joy. I think perhaps I'd better go to bed. I'm all right. I'll find a place to live, of course. Some place to live? Well, of course not, Mother. You'll stay with us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to find a new apartment. We've talked this all over, and Jane Lynn says, won't you, darling? We couldn't think of anything else. Well, we'll see. Well, then. Say, I told you it'd be all right. Oh, Johnny, maybe we shouldn't have gotten married. I mean, maybe we shouldn't have gotten married at all. Old visitor ashore, please. Old visitors ashore, please. Don't let him eat too many strawberries. I won't. He gets rashes. And don't forget to make him wear his raincoat in London. I won't. He had pneumonia once. Oh, Mother, that was 12 years ago. I feel fine now. And take good care of yourself, too. Goodbye, Mrs. Mason. Take good care of him. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Oh, now, Mother, oh, it's only two weeks, you know. I go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. What's this? The heating pad. You forgot to pack it. It's the only one I had left. I think we can do better after the boat sails. Oh, what for? I, I love it. It's so intimate. What's this? No, oh, that's nothing. No. Is it something somebody gave you? No. I know, but something no. for me. Oh, no, it's just, it is. No, Let me no, see it. What do you mean? What are you being so mysterious about? No, Let me no, see no, it. Really? It's nothing, Jane. Oh, I bet it's a going away present. You can't fool me, Johnny. You shouldn't have done this. Uh oh. Johnny, you fool. Gee whiz, I couldn't leave it in the office. Jane. What? You know, when I was in school, I was taught that two things can't occupy the same place at the same time. What? Oh. Well, we'll get the store to get us a, a bigger bed. No, well, you couldn't get a bigger bed in here, though. Oh, I think it's big enough. Oh, yeah, where are you trying to turn around? Sure right. it is. Let's see. That's awesome, man. Boy, that ocean's real big. Johnny, this is the first time in my life I've ever been away from America. Me too. Oh, isn't it just beautiful? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I... Jane. What, Johnny? You remember that cinder I took out of your eye up in Boston? Oh, I'll never forget. You know, I threw that away. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept that cinder, put it in a locket or something, you know? I hadn't been for that cinder, maybe we'd never have met. Oh, don't say that, Johnny. We had to meet. Uh -huh. I might be sure I... Still, if it hadn't been for that cinder... Oh, Johnny, isn't it just beautiful? Bon voyage, darling. Bon voyage. Where is Bible 4? First, to your left, sir. Come in. Well, hello, Carter. Nice of you to come down. Judge Doolittle sent me. He did. Oh, Carter, this is Miss, uh, Mrs., uh, that's my wife. I found out Mr. Carter from the office. How do you do? Happy to know you. It's a good thing I got here in time. You've got just about ten minutes. Ten minutes for what? To get off the boat. To get off, what are you talking about? Higgins against Higgins. What about Higgins against Higgins? Higgins against Higgins goes on the calendar for next week. 
Oh, no, no. Well, that's where you're mistaken. I got a continuance for a whole month. You think you did? Well, I did. I did. You asked Hornblow about it. He gave me his word of honor. Well, you know Hornblow. But, Johnny, they can't do this to you. No, they can't do this what to me. What does Jess do little think he is, a puppet? What does he think I am, a puppet or something? Some kind of a pawn he can push around any way he, he likes? Can push her all over the place? Is that what you want me to tell Doolittle? Yes. Oh, Carter, wait a minute. Are you sure that Higgins case is going on next week? Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Look, will you excuse us just a minute? Jane. Hi, I'm glad you said that, John. Yeah, sure. Jane, look, this Higgins versus Higgins is a pretty important case. I don't care if it's the most important case in the world. It isn't as important as our honeymoon, no, is it? No, no, of course not, darling. But just, what, what's the matter? That lipstick on your mouth. Oh, well, you know, a lawyer is sort of like a doctor or a soldier. You've got to disregard your own convenience. Convenience? You don't call this a convenience. Oh, no, no, darling. Listen, darling. Believe me, I'd tell Doolittle to jump in the lake and I'd even the, the risk of losing my job. But if I win the case, I get a chance to go in with the firm. And a, and a firm like this. But it's my honeymoon, and Doolittle knows it's my honeymoon. You, there are just some things a man just can't do. There's some things a man just can't do. That Carter thought it was funny. He laughed. Oh, I hate that, that liver pill. I ever try pulling anything like this again. I hate that judge do nothing. I wish someone would step on that ear thing of his. Well, we still have the tickets here. Oh, I hope Higgins beats Higgins. The alligator pears, Annie. Huh. Johnny! It's your mother-in-law. Oh, hello, dear. Uh, would you mind fixing the place card for me? I I'm so late. They're right in there on the desk. Certainly, dear. The girl took so long to fix my hair, I, I didn't get out of the place till half past six. Still sopping wet. You should have made an earlier appointment. Yes, I should. I thought I'd put Judge Doolittle on my right, of course. Naturally. Mr. Carter, I suppose I'll have to have him on my left. You seem to think I've never done this before. No, no, dear, it's just that I never have. You have the wine glasses on the wrong side, Annie. The left side was the right side where I worked before. The right side with the water glasses, Annie. How do you think the table looks? Isn't it a little crowded? Oh, that girl will drive me crazy. Oh, the things that pop up at the last minute. You know, I had to borrow some finger bowls from the woman downstairs because we only had four. Oh, are you sitting on Johnny's right? Well, I always have been. Well, I thought I'd put Miss Doodle there tonight. Oh, well, of course, it's your party, my dear. But just this once, do you mind? Oh, no, of course not. You know, I used to think that John and Eunice do little. Yes? There was nothing in it. But a lovely girl. Would you be a dear and see if Annie has the appetizers fixed? Why, of course, my dear. I think you have too many on the plate, Annie. And shouldn't they be garnished? Uh, where's the silver tray, the one I gave them? I don't know how many hands they expect you to have around this place. There's just so much a body can do. I'm only human. I'll fix the canopies for you, Annie, as you seem to have so much to do. A little bit too much vinegar in the salad dressing, I'm afraid, Annie. I'm only human. Oh, your potatoes aren't going to burn, are they? I'm afraid you put them on too early. I'm leaving. You're what? Right now. You can stand just so much, and I'm only human. But you can't do that. What's the matter? I can't please everybody. Oh. 
But, but Annie, my guests will be here any minute. Well, I'll see you through dinner, but I'm leaving at 9 o'clock sharp in order to catch the 9.30 ferry boat to Staten Island. And nobody's going to stop me. I'm only human. Watch the potatoes, Annie. Dear, Annie has so much to do with the extra guests and everything. Don't you think we'd better humor tonight and sort of leave her alone? But you asked me to see about the canopies. Well, I know, but it's a great deal for one person to do, and too many of us telling her what to do only upsets her. Well, I was only trying to help. Oh, there's Johnny. Hi. I bet you forgot the wine. Oh, oh Grandpa's favorite temple. Called up Doolittle's Club and found out. Pretty nice, huh? Uh, it's burgundy and it sparkles. Here, have Annie chill it, Mother. Of course, they'll be here any minute. Hey, come on, you better hurry up and get dressed. How's everything going? Everything's lovely. An ultimatum from Annie, and this one's final. She's through tonight. Tonight? It's all right, though. She'll see us through dinner. Oh. I don't see why you have so much trouble with service down the office and get all the help we want. I'd like to change places with you just for one day. Jane, for Pete's sake, what did you do with the witch case? I didn't have it. Look on the third shelf back of the eye wash. You're always putting things behind things. That was a brilliant idea of yours asking Eunice Doolittle at the last minute. Well, she and the judge are sort of like corned beef and cabbage. They're always together. And that impossible twerp, Carter. I suppose you had to ask him, too. Well, Eunice had some sort of a date with Carter, so what could I do? Gosh, I not only do all that guy's work for him, I feed him as well. Well, it's all going to be different when my name goes up there in that door. Johnny, you really think so? Well, it's practically up there now. What's for dinner tonight? Roast beef. Roast beef, Doolittle's delight. You know, I tried to have Annie make Yorkshire pudding, but she never heard of it. It's all right. Between roast beef and Higgins against Higgins, how can we lose? <laughs> so that's going to be all right. My name up there in the door. Doolittle. Nestor Smith. Doolittle. Hutch. And Mason. Oh, Johnny. Well, didn't I win my motion for a new trial on Higgins against Higgins? I had a memo from... Do a little today. You did? What did he say? He said he couldn't have handled it better himself. When he eats from your table tonight, he'll eat out of my hand. And will I tell Carter? And will we hop to Normandy? And will we go places? And will we do things? <laughs> Darling, I don't like that tie. Where the blue oh, one? Holy mackerel. Johnny, does your name have to be last? Well, for the time being, anyway. Gosh, you know what it means to a man to get into a firm like that? You know what it means to a firm to get a man like you in it? Here, hook me up. Yeah, it's a pretty nice neck you got there. Mm. As nice as Eunice Doolittle's? You know, well, what do I know about Eunice Doolittle's neck? Never even noticed she had one. Hey, you know what time it is? Get dressed, will you? Well, I am dressed. Well, come on, then. Oh, Granite Puss will be here any minute. Good evening. Well, Judge, good evening. We were just we, uh, I have great news for you tonight, Judge. We're having roast beef. What? Roast beef for dinner. Uh, would you care for some more wine, Judge Doolittle? What's that? More wine. Uh, yes, thank you. Annie, some more wine for Judge Doolittle. There ain't any more. <laughs> Annie, a salad fork for Judge Doolittle. I put one there. The funniest thing happened the other day, Judge Doolittle. I ran across the yearbook of my husband's class in college. And in the class prophecy, he was picked as the one most likely to succeed. What's that? The other day, I ran across the yearbook in my husband's class in college. And in the class prophecy... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Higgins 
against Higgins is a pretty important case, isn't it? Well, we like to think all of our cases are important. The little client of today may be the big client of tomorrow. Oh, you're so right, Judge. For instance, we got a client the other day that... Oh, dear. What happened to your ice cream, Annie? I told you to get that ice box fixed. Annie, give this note to Mr. Mason. Is it true, Judge Doolittle, something new is going to happen in the firm this week? Excuse me. What? Excuse me, please. Oh, yes. We're going to have a blood transfusion. I'm only speaking metaphorically, of course. What I mean is that we're getting some new blood into the firm, appointing a junior partner. Oh. You couldn't stand serve the coffee, could you, Annie? No. No. All right, now, here's $7, and I'll send you... I one. want my $12 now. All right, all right, Annie, I'll get it for you. I'll get it, maybe. That's the way we keep an old firm young. Doing this... Excuse me. Please. Johnny. Every five years. But it's quite a job to pick the right man. I shouldn't think so. Surely it's a question of merit. As a rule, I trust my own judgment. But when it comes to picking men... I... Excuse me, please. I... Johnny. I think there's nothing like a woman's intuition. Oh, you're so right, Judge. Of course, Eunice doesn't know much about law, but she's traveled all over the world and she does know people. <laughs> Five years ago, it was at her suggestion that I took Mr. Hutch into the firm. It went out so well that... I beg your pardon. I'm very sorry. This year, I have again consulted my daughter. And now, a new name moves up on the door of our offices. Beginning next Monday, the name of the firm will be Doolittle, Messerschmitt, Doolittle, Hutch and Carter. Well, Carter, that's... Congratulations, that's... That's wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it? I always knew you had it in you, Carter. I... Well, I, I'd like to propose a toast to the new partner. I... But we seem to have run out of wine. Out of, uh, there isn't any more wine. Have some note paper and an envelope, please. Certainly. Thank you. Oh, come here, the gem of the ocean. Would you like a stamp? No, thank you. Could I have a safety pin, please? Surely. Thank you. And I tell you, gentlemen of the jury, that the defendant Higgins, with unbrotherly venom and motivated solely by a desire maliciously and hatefully to interfere with his brother's rights and privileges, deliberately and improperly diverted the waters of the stream. Well, gentlemen, I leave the determination of these matters in your hands, confident that your verdict will bring justice to my client, the plaintiff in this action. <clears throat> Gentlemen of the jury, you will now retire to arrive at a verdict.
Jane, how long have you been here? Oh, I got here just as you started your summation. Oh, Johnny, it was wonderful. You should have been here when I cross-examined Higgins. You're Higgins? No, no, the other one. You skinned him alive. I tore him apart. I really caught him. With Johnny. It. Part of the second part wishes to announce the part of the first part that we're going to be in the market for large state. Part of the third. Jane! Congratulations, Mr. Mason. Good work. You did a swell job. <laughs> oh, <I'm... Oh, she's fine. Everything was fine. Baby weighs seven pounds, one and a third ounces. Is this mine? This is your boy. Now he's all yours, Mr. Mason. Yep, all mine. Come in again sometime. Thanks very much. I will. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think you're doing holding up traffic? Well, now, what is it, a boy or a girl? What do you think? Hey, cut that out, all of you. You want to wake that baby? All right, get going. Johnny. Uh-huh. You like him? Sort of. Don't you think he's just beautiful? Don't you think he's just beautiful? Jane, don't you think he looks old? Old? What do you mean, old? Well, I mean, don't you think he looks about six months old or a year at least? Don't oh, think? don't be silly, darling. Don't you think he's just beautiful? If he grows up to look like you. How can he? He has all your features. I don't see how you can tell that by looking at that. Well, just face. look at the crinkles around his eyes. They're just like yours when you're happy. Well, he doesn't look happy, Jane. He looks, looks kind of bored. Well, you'd be bored too if you'd been through what he has. Oh, don't you think he's just beautiful? Look at that, Jane. Look at that grip. Look, look at that. But don't you think he's just beautiful? Now, Mister, how's it feel to have your first bath? Be sure you soak his head thoroughly. It prevents cradle cap. Yes, I know, Mother. Pity Johnny doesn't want us the old cradle cap, does he? Boy, look at those shoulders. Jane, can't I do something, please? Johnny! What you've done? I almost dropped him. Will you please move over? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. 
it only let me show you how. I know how, Mother. They showed me in the hospital. Now you don't rub him dry, you just pat him. I am patting him. He looks red. Maybe the water was too hot. No, it wasn't, Mother. I tested it. It was just right. Was it in water too hot for Eddie Johnny? Johnny, give me a shirt. 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 Here. No, not that one. This oh, one. Yeah. Boy, look at that chest. Come on, Jane. Can I help? Be careful with it ahead, my dear. I will. Johnny, you better go in the kitchen and warm his milk. No. Not too hot, John. Oh, hallelujah, he's bathed. Touch of the colic. It isn't, Mother. He's just hungry. I'm sorry, my dear. It's a touch of the colic. He's been crying for five minutes. Johnny, where's that bottle? All right, mister, here you are. Feedback. They don't eat with their hands, you dope. Here, hoes. What are you doing? I'll get it. You see, Mother, he was just hungry. If he were fed on time, he wouldn't cry. Well, as soon as we're organized... Well, it's a pity he has to be fed on the bottle. I haven't heard the baby complain as yet. John never saw a bottle till he was six months old. I won't say anything. I won't say anything. I won't say anything. What's that, my dear? What do you think? It's a present from old Granite for us. But it's a summons. No, it's a bank book. Look. Oh, he's deposited ten dollars. Hey, that's a lot of money for the little guy. I hope it doesn't plunge Judge Doolittle into bankruptcy. I don't know. After that hospital bill, he's got more cash in the bank than I have. Well, I think it was very considerate of Judge Doolittle to think about the baby's future. Well, it isn't the future that worries me. It's the, it's the present. Where are we going to put him? Well, why can't he stay in our room? You know, he kept you awake all last night. My dear, you should have taken that into consideration before you rented this apartment. I know I should have. Now, if my own room weren't so small. Oh, oh. no, dear. I, I wouldn't think of it. Well, look, darling, why can't we keep him in our room in the daytime and in the living room at night? It's too far away from the bedroom. Oh, how about the dining room? It's too near the kitchen. But I guess it'll have to do. Miss, sis. Yes, Hilda? Could I see you for a minute, please? What is it, Hilda? Your mother-in-law hired me when you was away. But she didn't tell me why you was away. You mean you don't approve of my having a baby? Oh, yeah, that's your business. You can have as many babies as you like. Thank you. That's big of you. But my business is cooking. You can get somebody else to wash the diapers. You're, you're fired. Well, Johnny, now just don't worry about it. I wish I could go back to the hospital. Hey, after this lease is up, I'm going to get you a house in the country. You're going to have a room all by yourself. You're going to have a garden where you can ride around on your bicycle. And I'm... Hey, Mother. Mother, come here. Jane, look. He's smiling at me. He's smiling at me. That's gas.
Hello, darling. How was it? Well. Who was there? Oh, just the same old crowd, ten years older. Who spoke, Johnny? Well, uh, Ed O'Malley, he made quite a speech. Well, he just bought a seat on the stock exchange. Joe Kendall, he just came back from an opening in the London office. <laughs> did you make a speech? Yeah. What did you say? Well, uh, you know, just the kind of things you have to talk about at reunions, wasn't much. Well, what did you say, honey? My speech was pretty short. What did I have to say? The end most likely to succeed. Well, you still are. Well, I bet your speech was swell. <laughs> Did you tell him that funny story you told me yesterday? No. Didn't think of it. All I could think of was my achievement. What I've accomplished, how far I've gone. I suppose I could have told them that I used your money, all of it, to buy furniture for this apartment. Well, now, that's silly. Your money, my money. What difference does it make? It wasn't very much anyway. I don't know. Maybe I could have told them that the baby has to sleep in the dining room. Well, what of it? It's only temporary till we get another apartment. Yeah, just because I can't afford to get you a decent Stop that. Don't this. say those things. Sometimes I get so mad at you, I, I can't see straight. Sometimes I get so mad at myself, I can't see at all. I know what happened. Your dinner disagreed with you. What did you have? I don't know. I didn't eat it. No, I know what's wrong. You're hungry. Come on, honey. I'll get you something out of the icebox. Now, let's see. There's some cheese you like and a whole cold chicken staring us right in the face. Which? Chicken. Darling, the trouble with you is you let people step on you. You do all the work down in that office. Coffee? No, I don't know. Got more about law than Carter will ever know. How do you expect people to recognize your value? Why do I? Right. Unless you recognize it yourself. I couldn't get along without you for a minute, and you know it. Everybody else knows it. Everybody but Dula. He does, too, only he takes advantage of you. I told you when he promoted Carter over your head, you should have quit. Walk right out on it. Hey, how could I do that? What about... Bob I Dula? know your mother and me. I wish you'd forget about us. Well, if I lost my job... But you wouldn't. They wouldn't let you go. You're far too valuable. If you left, Doolittle would crawl on his hands and knees and beg you to come back. Hands and knees? Oh, no. You don't know Doolittle. Well, I know you. All you have to do is speak up. Stand right up to do little. Don't ask for your rights. Demand them. Darling, you... Remember when I bought you that ring in Boston? Promised you I'd get you a better one later? Well, I don't want a better one later. You said you liked the platinum one with the diamonds. Well, that can wait. Yeah, well, I suppose the mink coat can wait, too, huh? Well... About 400 years, I can afford to buy you one. What are you, a man or a mouse? A mouse. John Mason, you know what's the matter with you? You're too modest. You don't appreciate yourself. Well, I do want the platinum ring, and I want a fur coat. Not the mink one, but a fur coat. And I want a honeymoon on the Normandy, and I want an apartment big enough for your mother and the baby so the baby won't have to sleep in the dining room. But you can get that for me. You can get everything I want, everything that's coming to me. But first, you've got to get what's coming to you. Well, if I just knew how to go about it. It's easy. No, you think it's easy. You just walk right into the office and you say... No, Jane, you, you don't walk into Doolittle's office. He sends for you. Well, this time you're going to walk in. You go right up to him and you say, Judge Doolittle, there's something I've got to say to you right now. No, you can't talk to him like that, though. Have you ever tried? No, no Jane, you, you don't understand. I, if I barged in there like that, and he'd, he'd, he'd... He'd say, what is it, Mason? Sit down. He never asked me to sit down in his life. Well, then stand up, but don't let him interrupt you. Speak your piece. Oh, just... oh well, no, that... You speak your piece. It's easy to do here in the kitchen. You get downtown. Well, downtown a... or uptown, what difference does it make? You're not asking a favor of him. You're demanding your rights. He'll listen. Make him listen. All right, okay, all right. Well, what do I say? You'll say, Judge Doolittle, I've been working for you for five years now, and I've given you everything that's in me, every ounce. All right, what'll he say? There's no doubt about it, Mason. I never questioned your ability or your loyalty. Uh-huh. Well, I said it. Judge Doolittle, what are you going to do about it? I hate to think what he'll say. He'll say, Mason, what do you expect me to do? And he'll say, Judge Doolittle, the right thing. 
I want more money, and I want to be taken into the firm. And he'll say... Yeah, he'll say, he'll say plenty. No matter what he'll say, you'll say, Judge Doolittle, I either get a raise and a junior partnership or else. Or else you can accept my resignation effective immediately. Effective immediately. It's all right, Jane. Good idea. I'm gonna do that some of these days. Some of these days is tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Well, if you think I should. Well, darling, there's no time like the present. Well, come on now. Let's start from the beginning. Now, I, I walk into the office and I say... Judge Doolittle, there's something I got to say to you right now. Yeah, yeah. Judge Doolittle, there's something I've got to say to you right now. Either I get a raise and a junior partnership. Yeah, I, either I get a raise and a junior partnership. Or you can accept my resignation. Or you can accept my resignation effective immediately. Effective immediately. Not bad. And there's something I want to tell you right now. Either I get a raise in a junior partnership or else. Or else. raise and a junior partnership or else judge Doolittle is in okay or else you can accept my resignation effective immediately what is it a jury case ah uh, never mind i'm thinking here are the papers in city against consolidated i want you to drop over to consolidated and see their accountants okay Psst, just got in okay Come in. Judge Doolittle, there's something I want to say to you right now. There's... Judge Doolittle, I've been working in this office... Oh. Oh, it's you. Just the one I want to see. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Mason? Yes, sir. You've been doing pretty good work lately. Well, thank you, Judge. You've been capable, dependable, and loyal right from the first. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Judge. But, Mason, these are extraordinary times for all of us. Some of our biggest clients are affected. They all complain that they're practically working for the government. Most of them claim that it'll be all they can do to stay in business till the next election. So they're cutting expenses right and left. We're the first to feel it. Naturally, we must do something about it. Naturally. What? Naturally. Hmm. I don't want to cut down the personnel of my staff if I can possibly help it. It wouldn't be constructive. So the only way out, as I see it, is to tighten our belts. I'm asking everyone to take a 25% cut. I'm taking a a substantial cut in my own personal drawing account. It's a sacrifice, but it hits all of us. And these are days of sacrifice. 
Uh, Judge, I know, but I, I have... These alert. times, we must all put our shoulder to the wheel if we are to survive. Oh, yes, sir, the shoulder to the wheel. The only thing is, Judge... I'm glad you understand, Mason, and I appreciate your cooperation. Thank you, sir. Hello? Oh, excuse me, Mason. Yes, sir. Hello, Commissioner. How are you? Oh, Commissioner, you know that little piece of property up on Park Avenue? Yes, well, if the price is right... Did you want something, Mr. Mason? No, thank you, Lily. Well? Morning, Johnny. Good morning. How do you feel? I feel fine. What time is it? Three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, high noon. It's two o'clock, isn't it? Well, if you know what time it is, why did you ask me what time it is? What difference does it make what time it is anyway? I feel fine. Feel better now? Feel fine. Are you comfortable? Perfectly comfortable. Are you sure you're comfortable? Well, certainly I'm sure I'm comfortable. Well, don't you think you'd be more comfortable if you took your shoes off? Can I help you? I can do very nicely by myself, thank you. I feel fine. What time is it? Am I comfortable? How do I feel? I... You'd think I'd committed some kind of a crime or something. 
You'd think I was on the witness stand. I can do that. A man comes home looking for a little peace and quiet, and what happens? Blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you call me back? Why didn't you come home for dinner? A million questions just because a man... I ran into Judge Doolittle this afternoon after you saw him. Johnny, you fool. What difference does it make whether you get a raise or a partnership or anything? Oh, Jane, I'll let you down. I'll always let you down. I'm no good, Jane. Johnny, don't say that. It was my fault for it. It's very... I made you do it. I'm terribly sorry. I'll never do it again, never. We don't need anything. We have each other as a baby. Our beautiful baby. You're all I have and all I want. Please, if you tell me you feel bad, I'll die. Johnny, Johnny, look at me and tell me you don't feel bad. Oh, I don't feel bad, Jane. Jane, I don't feel bad. Honest, I don't. I feel fine. <laughs> Johnny, the next time you go out and get hurt, if you don't take me with you, I'll, I'll get a divorce. Gotta get a good lawyer. I've got a good lawyer. <laughs> Mason, no use looking for a job. Who said I was looking for a job? Oh, Lily, it isn't nice to go prying into people's affairs. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Mason. <laughs> Lily, you must be the 15th woman I've had working for me since I've been married. And you're too good to be true. You're worth your weight in gold. Oh, that's a lot of gold. You're the best woman I ever had in the house. Just simply perfect. Why, it breaks my heart to have to tell you I... Oh, never you mind, honey. I know. I'm a luck jerk. Oh, I'd never let you go, never if I... Oh, shucks, honey. You ain't getting rid of me. You's just getting me off your budget. Is the head better? Much better. I'll make an awful mess of things without you. Oh, no, you won't. You'll step right in and do the job. It's a pretty good job, too. A whole lot better than you can get on the outside. Taking care of a nice young man and a sweet little baby and an old lady that's a little penisky, but that's because she's getting along and don't have nothing to do. I wish it were as simple as that. Lily's a whole lot older than you are, honey, and she's done a lot of living. She learned one thing. Never let the seeds stop you from enjoying the watermelon. It's all right if you've got a watermelon. You mustn't say that, Miss Mason. You's got your watermelon. But you chokes yourself up on all them little seeds. I always say, spit them out. Spit them out before they spoil the taste for the melon. Spit them out. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Uh, are you sure Connor has our telephone number? He hasn't. He certainly has a telephone book. Well, then why do you suppose he hasn't at least called up? Maybe he forgot all about it. 
Mother, a man doesn't invite you to a New Year's Eve party and then just forget about it, you know. Maybe we should go join him at the party. Jane, I told you, I don't know where the party is. He told me he'd meet us here in his car at 9 o'clock. Well, it's almost 11 now. Well, isn't this party also to announce his engagement to Eunice Doolittle? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know, something like that. Well, perhaps he thought it would be a little awkward to have you and Jane at his engagement party. Oh, now, Mother, how could it be awkward? Well, awkward or not awkward, are we going to sit here all evening waiting to hear from him? Let's call him up. All the same, it might be awkward. Why should it be awkward? Well... <coughs> Hello, operator. Hello. What's the matter with this connection? Operator, I'm calling. Hello. Is this Mr. Carter's residence? Well, is Mr. Carter there? <coughs> oh, I see. No, no. No, thanks. Well, they say at Carter's house he left two hours ago, so just forget about it. A baby definitely has the sniffles. All babies have sniffles at this time of year. The cot is cold from you, you know, Mother. Well, that's simply ridiculous. Matter of fact, I caught my cold from the baby. He's had the sniffles all day. And when I took his temperature... That's when he caught your cold. He said that he didn't. He had no temperature. It isn't anything, Johnny. It's just the sniffles. I suppose I ought to stay in my room all day. Now, Mother, that's silly. You don't have to do anything of the kind. Heaven knows. I try to earn my room and board by doing everything I can to help. Oh, Mother, please, this is New Year's Eve. It's just like every other day, as far as I'm concerned. You were both perfectly willing to go off and leave me all alone to wait for the New Year. But perhaps it's the last New Year I'll ever see. Oh, now, Mother, why do you keep saying things like that? It's Carter. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, I want to leave this with you. Oh, Lily, sweet old thing. Oh, thanks a lot, Lily. Oh, it ain't nothing. Had a day off, cooked up some chicken, and where I worked, they give me the wine. <laughs> well, happy new year to y'all. Happy, happy new year, Lily. Have a good time. All right, goodbye. Well, that solves everything. Now we don't have to go out at all. We can stay right here and celebrate. We'll open the wine now, and at midnight, we'll have a grand feast on Lily's chicken. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, it's New Year's Eve. Let's have fun. You know it always gives me indigestion to eat just before I go to bed. Maybe there is some left over for me tomorrow. I never did approve of Lily. She's much too forward. But I do miss her cooking. Doesn't say much for mine. Oh, well, my dear, you learn. It takes time, of course. I won't say anything. Times are different now. When I was married, every well-brought-up girl knew something about cooking. Why, Jane, what is it? I can't cook. I can't keep house. I don't know how to bring up a baby. Jane, Jane, I'm sure please. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You resented me from the first moment you saw me. You resented me because you wanted Johnny to marry Eunice Doolittle. Why, my dear, I never said anything like that. Well, you've hinted at it enough, though. I did nothing of the sort. But they were engaged. Mother, I was never engaged to Eunice Doolittle. Oh, well, not perhaps engaged. And even if I had been, you shouldn't keep talking about it to Jane all the time. I don't see why she should be so touchy about it. Touchy? That's why you hate me. Jane, will you please... Go? No, let her go on. She can say anything she likes. I know my place here. I'm just a guest, an unwelcome guest. For crying out loud, what's the matter with you two? Well, there's nothing the matter with me. Well, this is her house. Now, this is not mother, my will you, Jane? Will now, you, I do everything I can. Now, listen. There's a stranger around here. Everything I say is wrong, and everything I do is wrong. Jane, will you? Just because I happen to mention that John and Judas do little. Now, stop it, both of you. All right, there. You see what you made me say to Mother? Well, you said it to me, too, don't I, Count? Yes, of course you count, darling, but Mother's an old lady. She won't be with us very long. Now, why can't you get along with her? Why can't she get along with me? Because she hates me. You don't know how it is. You're down at the office all day. Between taking care of the baby, the house, and cooking, and listening to her criticize everything I do, I can't stand it anymore. You can spit out only so many seeds.
to get away from that rank. Wait a minute. Don't you want me to go with you? Don't you understand a man wants to be alone every once in a while? Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. Really, I am. Jane, you don't have to apologize. Wouldn't you rather I didn't come with you? That's all right, Johnny. I don't mind. You go ahead and have a good time. Oh, well, well, you can come along if you want to. You sure you don't mind? Of course I don't mind. Well, we'll have a wonderful time. You just wait and see. Johnny, what's happened to us? I don't know. Maybe I pulled a dirty trick on you when I took the cinder out of your eye up in Boston. What do you mean? I mean, maybe the whole thing's been a mistake. What whole thing? Our marriage. Oh, Johnny. I've gotten into debt. I've gotten no place at the office. I've made a household drudge out of you, just like Mother said. Jane, it just hasn't worked out. It hasn't worked out. But we haven't had any real trouble. Maybe a, a few silly little things, little things that all people have to meet when they get married. Maybe we shouldn't have had the baby. Oh, but Johnny. I can't be sorry about the baby. Oh, I'm crazy about him. I'm crazy about you, too, Jane. I, I'd die for either one of them. Jane, everybody that passes the table, they look at you because you're so beautiful and young. And you've got your whole life ahead of you. Oh, ahead of us. No. Not when you're dragged down by a guy who just can't make the grade. No, I, I'm not going to hold you to that kind of a contract. <laughs> Know all about contracts. Well, I, I suppose this is what you call starting. The, you're right. At least we finally found something to celebrate. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Sad. Don't you feel good? I feel fine. Come on, yeah, Hank. Then we got champagne. Look what I found. A poor little lamb lost in the storm, alone and neglected. Happy New Year. Johnny, come quick, the baby. The baby? Something's the matter with the baby. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Healy, what is it? Pneumonia. <laughs> Dr. Healy, come into the office a minute. Sit down, my boy. You'd better get your wife. Now, Doctor, if it's bad news, I don't want her to know about it. She just couldn't stand it. You can tell me, Doctor. Your baby has type 9 pneumococcus with a streptococcus complication. And I'm sorry to say that the congestion is increasing. Now, there's a serum, a new one. It's worked out in some cases. Without it, we don't stand a chance. With it, well, perhaps we have a ghost of a chance. We must get some of that serum as soon as possible. Every hour counts. I don't know whether we can locate any of it in the city or not. I'm going to check up on that right away. Doctor, please don't tell my wife. I won't. Give me the city health department. All the type 9 serum has been sent to Salt Lake. Why don't you try Johns Hopkins in Baltimore? Sorry. We shipped all we had for the epidemic in Salt Lake City. Yes, the epidemic's under control here in Salt Lake. We can spare you 620 cc vials. But how are you going to get it out of here in this storm? See Judge Zulin right away. But the day, well, at this hour of the morning. You've got to wake him up. Oh, I couldn't do that. Now, you've got to. He knows me. I work for him. I've got to see him. I, I'm sorry, but Judge Doolittle would never allow me to be saved there. I, I, wait! You mustn't do that. Where are you going? You mustn't do this. It's outrageous. Judge Doolittle. Judge Doolin, come on, wake up, wake up. Judge, I'm sorry to wake you up like this. What is it? I got to talk to you right now. Are you drunk? No, my kid, my, he's in the hospital, he got pneumonia. You must be drunk, waking me up in the middle of the night like this. It's outrageous, I've never heard of such a thing. Mason, if this is your idea of something. Put it on. Now, you. now you listen to me. Now you listen to me. When you asked me to take that cut down to the office, I took it and I didn't beef about it, but I should have. Because that's the reason the baby has to sleep in the dining room. What are, you, what are you talking about? My baby's in the hospital, dying of pneumonia. What? Dying, dying, can't you understand? Dying? Yes, yes, my baby! Your baby? Well, why didn't you get in touch with me before? I'm terribly sorry, Mason. Oh, I don't need sympathy, I need serum. There isn't any in New York, there's none anywhere around here. And they finally found some in Salt Lake City, and. It's 2,000 miles away, and every hour counts. Now be calm. Be calm. I can't be calm. I can't be calm until I get that serum. And the only way to get it here is to fly it. Certainly fly it. But there's terrific storms over Utah. All the planes are grounded. If there's just one thing that we could do. Now, Mason, you must get hold of yourself. I know just how you feel, but you must get hold of yourself. Suppose the planes are all grounded. They could put it on one of the fastest trains, couldn't they? No, they can't. I told you, every hour counts, every minute counts. We need a plane from Salt Lake City, but we have a plane. But... Yeah. The pilot wants $5,000 to fly it to New York. Oh, I don't know, Judge. I... I just didn't have anybody else to turn to. Simon! Well, well, what are you standing there for? My checkbook. Get my checkbook. And get me a pen, quick. One that'll write. And find out where the nearest telegraph office is. Oh, yes. You should have gotten in touch with me sooner. Now, don't you worry about that serum. We'll have it here, and in plenty of time, too. Yes, Mr. Mason, the serum's here, and the money's here, too. And I could certainly use that kind of dough. But the weather's gotten so bad, it's impossible to take off, that's all. Well, what can I do? 
I know exactly how you feel. I'm a married man myself, and I got a couple of kids. I got to think of them. My wife won't let me. She says if I do go, she won't be here when I get back. If I get back. Well, what are you going to do with a guy like that? Let me talk to him. Now, listen, you. What do you think this is, a suicide club? You can't expect anybody in his right mind to fly a plane on a night like this, especially an old crate with whiskers. Why don't you... Well, sure. That's tough. We'd certainly like to help you out. Ain't there no other place you could get some of the stuff? Well, maybe in a few hours when the weather clears up. Gee, the guy's crying. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Take it easy. Suppose we... Well, maybe I... He just won't take no for an answer. Hold the wire. Jim, could I borrow your plane? Are you nuts? You know how it is. You've got kids of your own. Suppose you were in his place. Well, I can't let you take my plane. I haven't got any insurance. I couldn't get any. Hold it a minute. Keep your shirt on. I'll give you half the money if you loan me the crate. Well, what if you crack up? Then you can keep the whole five. I won't need it. Well, I think you're crazy, but all right, if you want to. Okay, buddy, relax. Think you'll ever get off the ground with all that gas? Well, I did go into Honolulu. I can't say I like that kind of dough. Looks to me like I'm going to be in five grand before morning. He's all right. He's holding his own nicely. Well, may I go ahead and see him? I don't think you better. Not just now. Why, Doctor? Why don't you want me to see Now, him? please don't worry. It's only the... Why don't you want me to... Oh! Oh! Lie! You're lying to me. He's worse. That's why you want the oxygen. Jim, now the oxygen's only to help him until the fear of you. Oh! You're lying to me. Now, I want you to lie down and rest. I'll give you something to make you sleep. Will you do that for me? Oh, Doctor Healy, please don't please. make me. I could Please. In a little while. <sighs> Baby dies, I want to die too. I know, dear, I know. But you mustn't feel that way. You mustn't let John know that you feel that way. He loves the baby too, you know. Almost as much as he loves you. <gasps> Poor Johnny. He'll be so lonely as the baby. He'll have you, Jane. And you'll have him. You can't be lonely either of you, as long as you have each other. Do you know when you're really lonely? When you have no one to share things with, not even a loss. Oh, Mother, you're lonely, aren't you? I wasn't always a bitter old woman. I wasn't always a pest and a nuisance. Not when I had someone to share things with. And now the baby. Oh, my baby's baby. Oh, Mother.
Denver calling commercial NC-24. Can't you read me, Conway? Can't you read me? Come in, Conway. Denver calling Newark. Do you read me, Newark? Still can't contact Conway. Storm increasing over the Rockies. Denver. Send out an emergency to all stations. Stand by to contact Conway. North Platte, Nebraska, calling Conway. Commercial NC-24. Do you read me? 24. This is Omaha. You hear me, Conway? Chicago calling commercial NC-24. Conway, can you read me? Can't you answer, Conway? <laughs> We haven't seen or heard a plane all day. Sorry, but there's no use sending searching parties out in this blizzard. how much he means to Johnny and me. Even we had him such a little while. Oh, God. Dear, dear God, please. We do want to see him grow up and be a man. Please help our little baby. We love him so. He's so small, helpless. He can't do anything for himself. We can't seem to do anything for him. Please. another tank of oxygen, Doctor? If the serum isn't here in another couple of hours. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Jane.
do you want? I'm hurt. Can you help me? Mercy sakes alive. What is it? What's happened? Never mind that. What place is this? Liberty Corners. Where is that? What, 35 miles from New York? For mercy sakes alive. St. Francis Hospital, New York City, Rush. Hello? Hello? Uh, op operator, I want the St. Francis Hospital, New York City. Reverse the charges. Well, gentlemen, I guess four's about enough on a business day. Well, that's all very good, Joe, but ain't it about time you bought one? What's that? Conway calling Doolittle. And there are certain things, gentlemen, that I want distinctly understood. Now, I called this meeting of all the partners in order to make my position clear once and for all. That before I accept your offer of partnership in the firm of Doolittle, Messerschmitt, Doolittle, Hutch and Carter, you must know that I consider the methods of this firm at the present time old-fashioned, self-satisfied, high-handed, and thoroughly inefficient. It seems to me that I... They're... And I demand that they be changed. Effective immediately. Come in. Excuse me, I hope we haven't interrupted anything important. Oh, Jane. Oh, Johnny, I know Jess Doolittle won't mind. We, we just couldn't wait. We had to rush down the moment it happened. What, what happened? The baby can talk. No. Yeah. No. Oh, they don't believe us. Come on, darling, let's prove it to them. Show them. Now, don't be afraid. Speak up. Say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Come on, darling. Say, Daddy. Come on, say, Daddy. Now, speak up. Now, don't be afraid. Say, Daddy. Hey, say, Daddy. Dad, 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 Daddy. Say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Come on, Johnny. Say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Mama. What? <laughs> <laughs> 